Uh, good evening, Mr. D'Souza. My name is Tommy Raskin. I'm a freshman here. I'm in the Amherst Political Union. It's one of the groups that put on this event. Uh, we want to thank you again for coming out. Um, after World War II, the white middle class soared to prosperity as a result of bills like the GI Bill. And um, African Americans who were coming home from war didn't get those benefits simply because they were African American. The US Department of Veteran Affairs denied African Americans access to those benefits simply because of their race. And uh, you are correct in saying that no one today dealt with that particular issue. With that being said, however, there was wealth amassed um, as a result of those programs that still exists today. And w when I think of your example about an individual who works as a janitor and sees people dining in a beautiful cafe walking home from work, I, I want to ask you, do you think any of that indignation given certain circumstances might actually be justified simply because there have been systematic blocks in people's way throughout American history, not ending with slavery, not ending with the Jim Crow laws, uh, not ending, some would say even today, we still have housing discrimination. All of which is to say, um, you found that during the Cold War era, there was a massive boom in uh, the, the white middle class's prosperity, and you just didn't have that among African Americans, not because they weren't meritorious, but because they were discriminated against. Uh, that's my first question. If you don't mind, I just want to ask you one more about the enemy from within. The, the core of the American system, this will actually answers your question directly, is that how do, what do we do about the conquest ethic of the past? And here there are two options. There are two options. One option is we establish equal rights under the law. That was the solution of the civil rights movement, that we have had race-based discrimination, we've had racial hierarchy. Let's stop. Let's treat people according to the color of this, according to the content of their character. Equal rights under the law. <laughs> Equal rights under the law. The other option, which you're defending, is you could essentially call it, let's correct for history. Let's correct for history. Let's try to find out who are the people in possession of stolen goods, and let's return it. Now, the first thing I'm trying to say is, this is a hugely controversial principle because it actually involves wrecking the freedom of a free society. You basically have to, to put it frankly, if we were to carry that out, go into people's homes and take their stuff. Take their furniture, take their cars. You don't seem to have even the guts to do that. You don't have the moral self-confidence to do it yourself. It may be, if I am advocating a rule of social justice and I'm advocating it for the whole society, before I persuade everybody else, let's say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I believe everybody should give 10% of their wealth to help the poor. And I go, you know what? There, the Bible says this, the Bible says that everybody should give 10% of their wealth to help the poor. And somebody says, Dinesh, are you giving 10% of your wealth? And I'm like, actually no, but I did do some tutoring. And you go, wait a minute, aren't you advocating? Aren't you saying that there is a moral duty to do this? Why don't you do it? Before you convince us, you do it. And you're like, I don't think I should do it because society is extremely complex. And I don't think I should do it unless everybody else does it. No. Either you believe in it and you do it. Once you've done it, you might impress us. And then you might convince the rest of us that our wealth is also ill-gotten. But you can't do it. And I'm not trying to indict everybody of hypocrisy, only you. Because, because you're, the one, you're the one who said, I'm the beneficiary of illicit privilege. So you're a really good starting point, because I'm asking, if you're in possession of stolen goods, why aren't you willing to return them? So that's why fundamentally I see your charity. You know, during the Civil War there was a guy who goes, I'm very happy to give I've given three cousins to the war and I'm ready to sacrifice my wife's brother. <laughs> That's basically your ethics. You're willing to have social justice if other people pay, but you're not willing to pay. So that's the problem. And that's the problem with the progressivism that marches behind social justice while protecting its own privileges. You know how you said, we all have to survive. Really, you have to be at Amherst to survive? 
You don't have to be at Amherst to survive. You have to be at Amherst to benefit. You have to be at Amherst because you're getting opportunities at this college that many other people are not getting. So if you say you believe in equal opportunity, you're a hypocrite because you are taking advantage of opportunities unavailable to others. But for you, this hypocrisy is fully justified because you are militating on behalf of the poor. But if, it's, if, if you are against privilege, this college is privilege. So there's a glaring hypocrisy and you will never turn your moral mirror on yourself to say, what am I doing about it? That's my point. For you, society should act before you do to enforce your moral code. Let's take a couple more questions and then we'll close.